Hello everyone, welcome to my tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can create a object counting and object tracking surveillance system. So by the end of the tutorial, you should be able to get something like this. So if you look at this video, you see that all the bounding boxes in the video comes with the ID tag. And we also have a count tab here, whereby every time a bounding boxes or every time the detected object that go past the horizontal green line it will increase by one so let me replay again so if you notice uh, every vehicle or every detector object has their own unique id and as you can see here as well there's this picture so every time the detector object passes the horizontal line object in this uh, square or in this rectangle will change to reflect the latest vehicle that actually passes the horizontal line so if you notice as well you'll see that i mean the the code itself also manages to detect objects here on the other lane since the detector object itself did not passes the horizontal line the counter did not increase by one even though they have detected something here so by the end of this tutorial, what we want to achieve is something like that. Because of that, we need to take it uh, one step at a time as I introduce, give you some introduction to the codes. We are going to make use of the simple motion tracking um, Python file that, we, that I have gone through previously. This code or this tutorial or that I'm going to teach you in this tutorial can be applied to any other object detections so long as it can detect it can create a bounding boxes and on its own so before i continue um with typing out the codes and explaining each line of codes allow me to explain the concept behind this uh, python uh, code or file so i would like you to imagine that there are two frames I mean in this example there are two frames and so there are also two objects in each frame so let me get continue to give you an example first so let me delete this. so in uh, frame 2 there are two objects the green box and the purple box and this box actually represents the bounding boxes that is detected by your model or by your code so in f at frame 1 you also have two bounding boxes and one of it is the green bounding boxes while the other one is the purple purple uh, bounding boxes so as you can see what happened between between uh, during these two frames was bounding boxes i would call this the green bounding boxes has actually moved from this position to this position from frame one to frame two on the other hand the purple um, bounding boxes actually move from position this position to this position at frame 2 so um, during frame 1 the, the code or the model has actually assigned a unique ID to the detected object so for in this case the green box let's say it was given a unique ID of unique ID 1 on the other hand let's say the purple um, bounding boxes was given another unique id it was and it is unique id 2 so in this case let me delete this first so in this case at frame 1 we have green bounding box with unique id 1 and purple bounding box with unique id 2 on the second frame we have the let me send this front on the second frame we have our green bounding box again and our purple bounding box however our model or our code cannot identify which one it actually is so what i mean was the model is unable to assign a unique id to the green bounding box as well as the purple bounding boxes to the model this is actually just another frame or another picture and the model managed to detect two boxes two bounding boxes but however it can't tell that this is the actually the same bounding box in frame one we can see easily tell that the object the bounding boxes actually has moved from here to here and the bounding boxes for unique id2 has moved from here to here 
However, for the model or for the object, they can't tell the difference. What they can see is that at frame 1, two objects is detected and then on frame 2, another two objects is being detected but they can't tell that this actually belongs to this and this purple bounding boxes at frame 2 actually belongs to it's the same object as the purple object purple bounding boxes in frame 1 so so while i was thinking about how do i can how can i uh, let the model understand that this two is actually the same object which has actually moved from here to here and I want the bounding box at, at this position to be still assigned a unique ID 1 and this to have a unique ID 2 and while researching I came across this uh, idea of cent central tracking by Pi Image Search I will leave a link in the description below but basically what it does is uh, firstly every object has a centroid and for a bounding box such as like this and this the centroid is usually at the center of the bounding boxes so let me draw the maybe we'll use a circle instead but so let it be here and here so I will just give a rough gauge of where the centroid should be so the idea of using central tracking is that we will use we will calculate the distance between the objects in frame 1 against the objects in frame 2 so this means that we will test out to see what's the distance between this and this and then the same thing is we will do for the other objects in frame 2 and then we will compare the distance between uh, the object in frame 1 and frame 2 by their centroid so once done um, because we have another object in the frame 1 we will also conduct the same thing change the color as well so you will compare the centroid distance between the centroid of the bounding boxes in frame 1 against frame 2 so when you compare you will see that actually the distance between this and this is shorter than the distance between the distance between this and this so essentially you will set a minimum distance such that they will know that this i this object is actually the same object as this in frame one so maybe let's say we want it to be so let's say um the distance between here and here is actually less than 10 which is the number that we the threshold we that we have set or the maximum distance that we have set then this will be regarded as a object un object with unique ID 1 on the other hand if this distance is more than 10 units we would assign the unique ID 1 to object to the green bounding boxes in frame 2 same, same thing if the if the distance between the centroid for these two positions so these two centroids are less than 10 then we will assign a unique ID 2 to this uh, object bounding boxes in frame 2 but if let's say it's more than 10 then we will assign a, assign a new unique ID for it it could be 4 or it could be 3 it could be 4 and then next we will go on to how maybe how we can make the counter works so the counter will only work when the centroid of the bounding boxes actually move past the green line once it's below the green horizontal line it will trigger the counter to increase the number of counts by one but because of the fact that we assign a unique id it won't cause the frames to be continuously triggered to increase the count by one so because of the fact that each bounding boxes has a unique id so every unique id is only allowed to increase the counter by once by one so when the bounding boxes actually pass move past the horizontal line or when the centroid to be more exact when the centroid of the bounding boxes actually move past the horizontal line it will also trigger the image to be formed so basically the coordinate of the bounding boxes will be taken and then we will paste it here on this uh, position so let's run it again bounding boxes actually passes the horizontal line it will increase it the count by one and also changes or update the image here so even though so even though the there's a unique ID that is assigned to the right hand side 
or right lane but because of the fact that it didn't cross this horizontal line the, count, the counter didn't increase by one and the, the image was not actually updated as well so I think after going through the concepts or the idea behind my code this is I would say this is the end of my part one of my tutorial so if you have any questions do feel free to leave your questions down in the comment section below if not thank you for watching and see you next time bye